Hello and welcome to episode 16 of my Build With Me Through the Battle Games of Middle Earth videos. If you are not yet a subscriber and you do enjoy my content, please do consider clicking that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the bell, ding the bell and select the all option because then YouTube will tell you whenever one of my videos goes live. So this video is all about Fangorn Forest. I'm actually shooting this quite early because of going away and I'm trying to do two videos at the same time. So I've pretty much finished the previous weeks, which was Rocky Outcrops, and I'm now gonna to start to do more trees. So trees are not a huge um, passion of mine. I love trees in real life, I like real trees, but making them really bores me a bit and I find it quite difficult. So this is gonna be a fun one because I'm gonna try and do something pretty cool. However, I have a very, very limited amount of time. So, it could be that that cool thing kind of goes by the wayside. We'll find out. At the very least, I will definitely produce what is in the magazine. So let's stop chattering away. Let's point the camera down and let's have a look and see what that magazine says. Fangorn Forest. The ominous and sinister Fangorn Forest is home to the Ents. It is one of the oldest forests of Middle Earth and the trees are massive and ancient. Fangorn is dense and claustrophobic and is marked by a perimeter of thick roots, gnarled trees and thorny undergrowth that surrounds it like a fortified wall. When the Urukai that captured Merry and Pippin were attacked by riders of Rohan, it seemed that the two hobbits would be trampled to death in the confusion. However, they managed to drag themselves to the borders of the forest, where they were inadvertently rescued by Treebeard. In this modelling workshop, you will learn how to make small forest sections that can be placed together to represent Fangorn Forest. The basic construction of the trees is similar to that described in Pack 8. I didn't have fun doing that one either. <laughs> However, the advanced techniques and extra details presented here will really add to the atmosphere of your woods. You will need all the same materials that you use for the trees in Pack 8, as well as some offcuts of styrene from the rocky crops in Pack 16. So let's briefly talk through the requirement, requirements and then get stuck in. So it says garden wire, masking tape, lichen, sisal moss, sponge or coarse turf, a large paintbrush, brown and green acrylic paint, flock or static grass, clippers or wire cutters, PVA glue, plaster filler, styrene offcuts, a junior hacksaw, scissors, coarse sandpaper, green pan scourer, brush bristles and small twigs. So it's a pretty standard list of requirements. So step one is the styrene base. Take a small off-cut block of styrene and mark it into a rough oblong. The exact dimensions aren't important. We used a piece that was approximately 14 centimeters, six inches long and five centimeters, two inches wide because it was conveniently left over from Pack 16's Rocky Outcrop. I do like that, you're just using up bits. That's a really good idea. Uh, I always save uh, the larger bits of my styrene, uh, uh, so yeah, I, I will have loads of that lying around. Cut the styrene so that the ends are rounded and then shape the sides with the junior hacksaw exactly as it did for the hill in pack 4 and the outcrops in pack 16. Next, using a sheet of coarse sandpaper, smooth down the slopes of your base. Be sure to do this over plenty of newspaper in a well ventilated area as lots of dust will be created when you sand the styrene. If you have a ventilation mask, then it is a good idea to wear that as well. Well, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to gather together some materials to get this started and I'm going to get this started. I've just found myself a lump of polystyrene that I'm now going to shape into the base. So the size of this is around 20 centimetres long and around uh, 10 centimetres wide and it happens to be five centimeters thick. This was saved from when we insulated the building. I've got a big, big, big pile of polystyrene in the roof. I'm a hoarder, what have I said? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna angle around it and we're gonna shave it down. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do it so we're gonna have two trees and we're gonna have a little bit of a kind of dip in the middle. So potentially it'll look like it's a path between two trees. That's what I'm gonna be going for in this. So. I'll put some music on because this is not going to sound very nice and you can watch as I carve.
Look at all that mess I've made. Isn't that wonderful? I'll tidy that up in a second. So the concept here is that you've got a path coming through the middle and you've got two rocky outcrops here using the technique from the previous video that worked out so well. So I'm just going to use it again to make that into rocks. And then I'll have a tree on either side, probably trying to make it meet in the middle so that it's a little bit of a kind of like an entrance way into a forest. So that is step one. Next up, step two, which is wire tree trunks. So I'm going to tidy this up. I'll show you doing one of them and I'm actually training myself today watching videos so I'm going to sit and I need to make loads for this, two for this one, but loads for my other build, which, yeah, I really hope I get it done. <laughs> anyway, onwards. So we reach step two, wire tree trunks. Using a pair of clippers or wire cutters, snip some pieces of garden wire to use as your tree trunk. We use lengths of about 16 centimeters or seven inches Although yours can be smaller or longer if you wish. In pack 8 you use 3 to 5 lengths of wire to make a single tree trunk. For the thick, gnarled trees of fango and however, you will need between 5 and 8 pieces. Twist them together leaving plenty of room at the top and bottom to spread out the roots and branches. Because you are using more pieces of wire, you will find that you can make some of the branches and the roots thicker. Up to 3 strands per branch or root is a suitable number. Finally, Take the branches that are made of more than one strand of wire and separate the strands to make individual offshoots. So that's what it says. What you can see in front of you here is a Aptamil baby food box stuffed full of metal wire, thick and thin. And I'm going to be using this thicker stuff to make my tree trunks. So what I'll do is I'll grab a handful. How long are these? I don't know. 20 centimeters, so a bit longer than I say, but not massively longer. And what you do now is you just start twisting them together. Now, if you remember in the original, um, in the other video I did, I actually used some uh, tape to hold it together, but I'm now gonna show it to you that you don't need to. So I take one strand and I wind it around to get it started. And that should be enough to hold that in place. This is going to do the beginning of the trunk, okay? So I'm now going to wind all of that. So we've got a beginning of a trunk, and we can bend that and do whatever we want. What we're now going to do is we're now going to um, bring out our first branch. And if you remember, let's just get my, what's it? What I want to do is I want to have these meeting over. So they're going to be growing in a direction. They'll be growing towards each other. So I'm going to do two that are going to look very similar. Um, so this is going to be the first um, branch, which is going to be uh, the lowest branch, which is probably going to be meeting with the other one. So now that I've split that off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to twist those together. And then now we've got that, we can do a few more of the branches by twisting them. It's not a very scientific method right now. My other one that I do actually like, I just didn't really enjoy the process, I like what it looked like, was modelled on a tree in my garden. This is modelled on my imagination, which is probably not the best thing to be doing because you should really have a picture of a tree that you're trying to build, otherwise you'll make mistakes. But anyway, so we twist that, there we are, until you've got two tails sticking out as you can see, so you're going down to a single one. I will now continue that for the rest of the tree and I'll continue that for the other trees and then I'll be making a load more trees <laughs> for the other build which I really really want to get done and I'll bring you back in once that's all completed I want I'm doing step three this could take me a couple of days <sighs> there we are make that a little bit taller as you can see and then split that off, twist them all around, twist them like that. And twist them like that. Now a lot of these off cuts I'll be able to clip and maybe reuse to make brushes or smaller what's it. So I won't be throwing all the wire away. Um, it's just this is the thickest wire that I have. 
and so I wanted to use it for these trees. So I'm going to, oh, that's going to look really good. Going to do the, uh, so I've, I said I was going to go and then I've not gone. But that's because I'm working away on this and thinking out loud. So I'm now going to do the uh, these roots. So split them out, leave one, which will allow me to pin this, which is what I want to do. And then we'll twist these together in the same way as we twisted the branches and they will now become nice questing roots. So there we are, as it happens. That took about five minutes including the intro chatter. Doesn't take long to make these. I've just got a lot to make, which is a bit of a pain. So there we are, all done. I will be back later with the next step. I've made these two now, um, and now I'm ready to do the clipping off. Well, nearly, I've seen a couple that I've missed twisting, but I'll just quickly do this on camera just for these first few, and then I'll finish the rest off, off camera. And so all I'm doing is, when I'm happy with the length of the, um, of the branch, I've got my wire cutters, let me just clip it off there. Bear in mind, we can always clip more off, but you can't replace it. So don't overclip. If you're not totally sure, just don't clip it so far back. Ding, that flew across the room. So what I'll do is I will go through, I'll finish these last couple that I've missed through twisting and clip the others off. And then I'll do the other tree and then we'll be back in with the next step, which is gonna be wrapping the um, masking tape around. We're now on to step three. But before I do that, I just want to show you that this is looking really nice. It's basically exactly how I imagined it. We've got the trees reaching over with the track in the middle. So it's going to look really, really nice when it's done. Anyway, step three, covering the wire. Cover the whole tree with small strips of masking tape. Just as you did in Pack 8's modelling workshop, make sure that none of the wire is visible through the tape. So I'm going to pick this one to do this with. And I have some thin masking tape, which is what? Uh, 12 mil maybe and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take little strips and wrap it around as simple as that there we are and I'm going to do that for the whole tree and then I'm going to do it for the other tree as well now I do have another technique that I do use sometimes which I'm not going to use on this one. These ones are going to do it on the other build. I'm going to follow the instructions as per the letter on these. So I'm going to build this up with masking tape like that. And then I'll be back for the next step when it's time. It's fiddly. It's painful when you stab yourself. But it works. So... I'm going to stop filming because what I'm going to do is going to move over towards my YouTube. I'm going to watch some videos while I'm doing this because frankly, otherwise I'm going to go nuts. So anyway, this is what I'm going to be doing for the next little while. Quite a little while, as you can see, it's not the quickest process in the world. Anything like that, come along, get yourself a knife, got one to hand, slice down there. There we are, and then you can press in either with the back of your knife or with another tool, whichever you want to do. There we are. Right, I'm going to get the rest of this done and the other tree done. And then I'll be back for the next step very shortly, or in your time very shortly. It has taken me all evening to put the masking tape on those, literally all evening. I really hate that process. So anyway, that's done now. I'm too tired to do the next stage, which is the texturing um, with the plaster filler. So yeah, that's gonna wait until if I get time tomorrow. But um, at least that horrible process is done. Now I'm gonna cheer myself up before I go to bed. So my advanced build. Now, we're doing Fangorn. And there were two elements to Fangorn which immediately sprung to mind as something that I would very much like to model and one of the two I'm going to do and one of the two I'll leave until another time. So the two 
elements were the place where Mary and Pippin meet Treebeard. So that is in the books, and these are both going to be from the books rather than from the film. In the books is a big cliff or a rock with some ent-sized ent steps up and then a ledge near the top where Treebeard can stand and look across his domain. That'd be pretty cool. But the other one is Welling Hall. Now Welling Hall is Treebeard's home, is where he takes uh, Mary and Pippin um, and in the films that's where you meet Old Man Willow who obviously is actually not there, he's actually um, the willow tree that, that tries to eat them and then Tom Bombadil saves them from a fire earlier in the journey but anyway um, we're going to again go for from the books. So the description is, suddenly before them, the hobbits saw a wide opening. Two great trees stood there, one on either side, like living gateposts, but there was no gate, save their crossing and interwoven boughs. As the old ent approached, the trees lifted up their branches and all their leaves quivered and rustled, for they were evergreen trees and their leaves were dark and polished and gleamed in the twilight. Beyond them was a wide, level space, as though the floor of a great hall had been cut in the side of the hill. On either hand, the walls sloped upwards until they were 50 feet high or more, and along each wall stood an aisle of trees that also increased in height as they marched inwards. At the far end of the rock wall was sheer, but at the bottom it had been hollowed back into a shallow bay with an arched roof, the only roof of the hall, save the branches of the trees, which at the inner end overshadowed all the ground, leaving only a broad open path in the middle. A little stream escaped from the springs above, and leaving the main water fell tinkling down the sheer face of the wall, pouring in silver drops like a fine curtain in front of the arched bay. The water was gathered again into a stone basin in the floor between the trees, and thence it spilled and flowed away beside the open path, out to join the Entwash in its journey through the forest. So there's more than that, but that was reading from the Two Towers. Um, and so what I've done is I've got this board here which is actually a tile made of plasterboard with a little bit of texturing on it and I've taken the plastic from around the edge if you watch my uh, vlogs you'll know that I use one of these for my remote gaming board and I found that the, the sellotape around the edge was a bit bad so I've actually managed to take that off and put masking tape on it. So this is what the tile is going to be and that's how large it's going to be and I've started making trees. <laughs> oh trees! <laughs> I don't make things easy for myself because I need a lot of trees. And what I've done is I've done a sketch, which I do every now and then, but not very often. So what you can see here is we're going to have two big trees here at the entrance. They're going to be here. And then we're going to have a sloping wall coming up here, which is going to be here. So a sloping wall leading round like this, and then a hollowed out at the back. We're going to have a stream coming along top of it with a waterfall, and then the stream is going to come down the middle and go out just past one of these trees. Um, and this is going to be a nice flat area, and there's going to be trees over the top from the top of the bank. It's going to be fun. Inside the hollow it says that there's a large table, and also later on in the book it says that there is a bed made of... Um, branches and fern. So I will also be putting a wood, a stone table inside the hollow and then on the other side I'll be putting a big pile of brush um, which is where Mary and Pippin actually end up sleeping. So that's my advanced build. That's what you see in front of you. It's Monday. I really have four days to finish this. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure I'm going to do it, but I'm going to give it a go. And it's going to be in the video because even if I don't achieve it, it doesn't matter. It's going to be great fun um, and I can always wrap it in a separate video. Uh, but I'll be doing my best. So the, the first thing for me to do is make more trees, which I'm just going to continue doing. Uh, fortunately, I'm doing some training, so I'm able to sit and watch videos and twist my um, way into madness with this wire. Um, and I'm going to need to get some foam and stick that foam and shape it and stick it down to this board and then texture it and then I mean it's doable but it's going to be a challenge so there we are we're going to make Welling Hall. Now it's time for step four texturing the trees. Use a large paintbrush to apply a coat of thinned down plaster filler all over the trees. This makes a great texture that will resemble tree bark and is essential to replicate the gnarled, aged look of the trees from Fangorn Forest. Leave the filler to dry completely before painting the model. So I have, that's what happens, some filler here, which is actually already oak light, apparently, and it's not dry, so that's good. 
and I have a brush, which is kind of large, I suppose, I'm not sure, and some water here so I can, fit, so I can thin it down. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to start painting. So let's see how well this works. Let's uh, water this down a bit and start applying. let that to dry now before I uh, ruin it with fiddling with it because one of the things I don't like about using masking tape is masking tape is by its very nature not all that sticky you're supposed to be able to remove it and so whenever I'm doing this technique exactly as I'm doing on this video I always find the masking tape delaminates or unsticks or whatever you want to call it and that really annoys me and it's done it in all the sorts of places on this, so I'm just going to have to leave that and hope that it's okay. So what I'll do is I will put that somewhere else to dry, so I'm not going to knock it when I do the next one, um, and then I'll do the next one. But that took me about five, six minutes, not too long, but yeah, onwards. The next thing to do while I'm waiting for those, um, for the trees to actually dry, um, which is, I've gone over them with a bit of super glue actually, where the, uh, um, where the masking tape wasn't sticking properly. The next thing to do is going to be to put some texture onto this. Now, if you remember, I said I wanted to have a cliffy, kind of rocky, um, and then this is going to be more of a track. So it's going to be less green than, than, the, than the design in the book, in the magazine. But I'm going to use the same technique as I used for the last video. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some PVA and we're going to stick some larger chunks of stone on, like so. And then once we've got enough of that in, then what we'll do is we'll come along with some other gravel and I'll put some more PVA on and we will make this in, looking into a really nice rocky outcrop type thing. So we'll put some more PVA in now. I've got a brush now to spread this around a bit. the hole there where I've pressed through so I know where that particular tree is going to go. So what we're now going to do is grab ourselves a spoon and I've got unsifted sand this time which I think is going to be a better idea. I'm just going to scatter that liberally over the lot like so. There we are. And what I'll do now is I'll let that dry. Well I'll do the other side obviously first <laughs> but I'll let that dry and then I'll come back in and hit that with a black. So um, I won't continue showing the rest of this until I get to something new, because this is going to be basically the same as the previous video, but I did just wanted to show that um, you can also use unsifted sand, just grab, this is just uh, stuff that gets delivered from a building site, because uh, I'm doing the renovation. Um, you don't need to do the sifting for this kind of, uh, of cover. So yeah, pretty pleased. This is clearly where we're going to have to scale it down slightly, because if it's going to be as high as it says in the book, 50 foot, then you're looking at what six foot a normal person is three mil um, 50 foot is going to be 10 times that it's going to be 30 centimeters high it's going to be about that big it's probably going to be a bit big for me to do 
but we'll see. I might do, I might put another slimmer bit on, but I need to also be able to sit the trees on top of this. So what I've got is I've got some white bubbly foam, which I don't normally like using, but for this, it's gonna be ideal. And I've got my props on out. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure where I want it to cut, where I want to cut it, which will be around across here. Cut these down, glue them together, and then start to shape them. And I'll use a hot wire cutter for that as well. So if I grab myself, uh, not easily to hand right now, there we are, that was a bit careless. If I grab myself a marker pen and then draw on here roughly where I want to cut it, there we are. What I'll do is I'll go over now to the proxon and we'll trim it there and there. I've measured that, marked it up and realized I put it in the wrong place. <laughs> I meant to have this a bit further forwards because I'm gonna fill in the back there with other, because there's gonna be the slope here and then the cliff here, if you remember from the description. So we're actually gonna cut it there and there. Right, that's better. Right, let's get over to that Proxon. There we are, Proxon's running. So what we're gonna do is just roughly push this through, put it a little bit further over here because it's gonna get caught up over there. And yeah, let's do this. Right, I'll cut the other one and then we'll get them stuck together and I'll bring you along for the next bit. I've cut both sides. This is the right hand side. You can see I've marked front and top, front and top on these so that I know what I'm doing. And what I've done now is I've just drawn a couple of lines which I'm gonna now shave out because that's how I'm gonna contour it. So it will go up to that high, but it'll have like a, a bay kind of thing, a slope, and it'll open out. So that we've got a little bit more floor space in the middle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the table, the, sort of the um, Dremel again, Dremel? on again to go along these lines. So I'll do this one and then I'll get the rest of them done off camera. There we are. So that will sit very nicely on top of the other one as you can see. And when I shake that down, it'll be steep, but I'm gonna be putting some other terrain um, material on, um, some sculpting material, um, and that will then nicely tie in with this line here when I cut that out. So let's get that done. There we are, so that's done. So that's top and front, top and front, and they will marry up quite nicely when they are stuck in and shaped. So I'll do the other side and I'll bring you back for the next stage in a bit. I have ummed and ahed a little bit about the way I'm gonna do the next step because I need to glue these two layers in place but I don't have any foam glue which is then gonna be good for a hot wire cutter which is a bit of a pain really, I'm a bit of an idiot there, should have, should have some in but I don't often use a hot wire cutter which I probably will start to do. I've got this from the hot wire factory which is a wand um, and what I think I'm going to do is actually glue this all in place and then, um, no sorry, I'm not going to glue it, but I'm going to actually use um, cocktail sticks to secure it all in place and then do the basic shape, shaping with the wand when it's all um, cocktail stick together. Now I've stuck that one together, but I've left this one because I wanted to show you a little technique I've got for how you can do this and actually, because it's quite hard when you put a cocktail stick in, um, you don't, don't want to push it all the way through, um, it won't get very much purchase with this thickness, it'll only have a 5 mil or so in, which is a bit of a pain, so you need to um, put it into the bottom bit and then sandwich the one on top, and it can be quite hard to line it up. So what I do, the way I get around that, is I'll put some cocktail sticks at the front, which is where I want the edge to be. And then we'll stick our cocktail sticks in to the bottom, like so. There we are, don't need too many. And then what I can do is I can then come in with those cocktail sticks as a guide. And I'll know that when I push down, it will be nicely lined up, which it is. So there we are, so that's how I do that. So I'm gonna do this now, um, and then I'll get my hot wire cutter here and I will do the rough um, template or the rough shape that I want. And, um, and after that, I will then be able to glue it down properly with my gator glue and clamp it, and I'll also be gluing it to the base. Um, I think I can still achieve this, 
I need to have this done and be to the stage of putting on the Luke APS's modelling compound and other texturing this evening, otherwise I've got no chance. At the back you can see I've done some more shaping as well, some more cutting. This is where the bay is and it's going to kind of like come up and over the top. So I've got a bigger piece here, which um, I'm probably going to build up with little pillars here just because I'm, and then I can, uh, because I want that to be kind of like there, basically, because it needs to be a cliff. I'm, I'm not really having very much cliff, if you see what I mean. I've, I've just got a hole in that, what have you. So I might even... I'm not sure. I'm still thinking. I'll stop talking because I'm not sure. But I'm looking at the back there. So we'll see. Rather than get stuck, I decided to just crack on. So I have done my shaping of the banks. As you can see, there'll be a little bit of filling in to do there, which I might do with some more foam, or I might just do with the sculpting. Not totally sure yet, but I know that initially I need to glue these two things together. So I'm going to get my uh, rapidly dying bottle of gator glue. I've got another one coming. And this next one I won't damage the, the tip so it won't dry out in the bottle. I was an idiot and didn't do it right, put a hole in the top of it and everything. <laughs> um, so when I can get that open, <laughs> give me a second. There we are, done that. <laughs> that was a bit difficult. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue these two together and clamp them. And I'm also going to glue them to the board. So let's get that done. Right, I'll get the other side done and I'll bring you along for the next step in a bit. These are dried now and I'm going to do another coat of the filler because I'm not very happy with the texture but at least now the underlying um, pain with the masking tape should have passed. So I'm going to go in, same technique, and put another coat on. I've come up with a plan for the cave. I hope it is cunning like a fox. It might be, it might not be. So here we can see I've got a block of the polystyrene and underneath I've glued together the two ends. Now I've actually inversed, inverted them <laughs> as it happens. So I've uh, changed the arrangement a little bit, but there is the top now, not that as it, as it did say. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this here, turn it upside down and draw around it. So, well, actually, yeah like that basically because I'm going to want to cut along there and cut out there so that there shows my where the cave needs to meet and it's going to have a, a, a straight up and down back because it's just going to be easier for me to do so I'll pop that back over onto the table to the board and what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to get my table, I'm going to cut that out in a straight line and then I'm going to get the uh, other, um, the, the sculpting and I'm going to cut that out curved. So it will go back to there and it will be curved and then when that sits on top it will be, it will have a curved front to it, which I probably should draw in as well just to give me help while I'm drawing it. So it will be roughly like so. Now it's going to be a bit difficult to do that because I don't want to go through the top, but if I do, then it doesn't matter really. I can put another piece of polystyrene over the top, and I probably will anyway. I might end up building up the sides a bit more and making the far end, the back of it, higher. We'll see. Anyway, that's what I'm going to do. So we're going to get the, uh, get the hot wire cutters and cut and sculpt that out, and I'll bring you back in for the next step very shortly. That has worked really well. I'm very, very pleased with how that looks now. So the next thing to do is, just before I glue this together, is I have another section here of polystyrene that I'm going to cut to fit into these gaps here. And then I'm going to glue the whole thing together and weight it and leave that to dry. Um, and I'll also probably glue it in place at the same time and then clamp it all down and leave it to dry for an hour or so. Um, but yeah, really, really pleased with that. That was quite easy. And the first time I used that um, hot wire factory tool, it didn't really do what I wanted it to do. But that time I was much more able to cut with it. So maybe just a bit of practice always helps. So yes, onwards. Let's get this filled in here and then glue the whole thing together. It's time to do bark stuff again.
So this is going to be a cliff, as we know. And it's going to be a cliff with a bit of an overhang, but basically it's going to be quite a sheer cliff, which is what the book described. So what I'm going to be doing is taking my bark, you can see I've turned it on its back so that it's a bit easier. But I'm going to be taking my bark and I'm going to be positioning it around to get my cliff. And then I'll do the, the same thing as I did before, which is I'll be able to um, paint it black and then dry brush it and make it look really pretty. So I'm going to just get that done. I'm not going to run the camera because it's the same process as we saw before in the other one, but it's going to be as simple as that and then using the same gator glue and then weight it down and then leave it to dry for an hour or so. So it's nice, it doesn't take so long to dry. So I'm quite pleased with how this is working out at the moment. Um, I may end up actually delaying releasing this video until a week late. It is a bit crazy for me to try and get two videos done in one week, uh, which normally take me four weeks to do. That's what I've been trying to do. I've done quite well, but I want to get this in. I want to include this, and I'll be sad if I don't. So I think I might delay it. So I'll get as much done as I can, and then it might be that I have to, have to push it back. But that's fine if I do, I do. So anyway, onwards, I will get this bark done, and I'll bring you back to show you what it looks like when it's done. The bark is all glued on, so now I'm about to do the modelling compound over the whole thing. I will eventually, like I've said, do the outside, um, but I might not do that this time. I might just start, because I'm not going to get it all done this evening, because it's quite late already. It's already quarter to 11. Um, but I'm going to build it up along here and potentially do around the cliffs and fill that in so I can start to paint the cliffs. So that's what I might start on, actually, is around the cliffs and around the base and in there, so I can start to paint on it. And then I need to work out the stone, um, like the, the thing there, the stone um, container, whatever it's called. Um, and then the stream's going to come down here. So, um, yeah, so I'm probably going to start back here. Um, I will show you where we get to it before the end of the night uh, and see how far I can get. So let's get started. When I finished last night, it was gone midnight, so I didn't actually pull the camera out and do a little quick video because it was just too late. I was too tired. However, I've come this morning and it's looking really well. You can see that the uh, loose APS uh, modelling compound has gone on nicely, filling most of the gaps. There are some I've not been able to get to, which I'll need to do uh, with it at a slightly different angle. Uh, the bank has been done um, and you can see where the stream is going to go fall down here. Now, the only issue I've got is I'm running out of the uh, modelling compound again. So that's a bit of a pain. However, the good thing is, is that this should be good for resin. Um, so I just need to seal up here uh, for the uh, to pour for the resin pour, and I might be able to get away with doing something a bit different here um, with regards to the scenicking than Luke's APS. So I'm not sure that, that's going to be something I'll think about during the day. I'm going to leave it to dry now. Um, it's still a little kind of soft to the touch. Um, we had some storms, so the windows were shut, so it wasn't all that much ventilation after I went to bed. Um, so, so yes, yeah, so it's not really dried yet, uh, but it will do, I'm sure. Um, and because I've made the sensible decision to postpone this video release for one more week, then the pressure is off. So there we are. That's what it's looking like right now. I'm really, really pleased. So far, it's looking, it's going to look really nice when it's finished, I'm sure. Back to the official build, and you can see this is coming on nicely. The rocky kind of outcrop terrain type thing here, which I'm probably not going to leave entirely as rock. I'll do some. Uh, sand and gravel and what have you on it as well and some some grass but that's looking really good I'm really pleased with how that is and these two trees are coming out exactly how I wanted them to um, if I lift that up slightly you can see that they do make that nice avenue over the path which is what I was looking for however as I was making these I made the uh, roots far too big for, for this particular not all of them too big but some of them are definitely too big so what I'm going to do first of all I've got a few processes I'm going to get done now what we'll do first of all is I'm going to trim off some of these um, roots which could be quite hard because they're twisted I might need to get bigger snips than these yeah I'm going to need to get my bigger snips so I'll go and get my bigger snips and trim them off but I'm going to trim off basically what what I've done in the um, what I've what I've Textured is what I want to keep and I'll get rid of everything that isn't textured. So these just aren't man enough So I'll go and get the big snips um, and then I'll bring you back when that's done um, And when I'm about to start texturing the actual path 
um, which I'll do next. And I'm also going to pa paint some PVA over this just to stop it from being a little, it's a little bit kind of crumbly. So I'm going to put a, put a coating of PVA just as a protective layer. Um, and then, yeah, onwards, then we'll be painting them as well. So, um, yeah, trim these down and then I'll be back. I've trimmed these roots, as you can see, using the, uh, the big boy pliers and snips, so that's a good thing. So what I'm now going to do is, uh, before I start working on the path, I'm actually just going to do the grey the gray overbrush and then the, white, the light grey dry brush on the stones. Just figure I'd do that now, get it out of the way. It's uh, the technique from the previous video, so I won't show too much of it. I'm not going to bother with doing lots of different colours on this. This is supposed to be dark and dingy, so having bright colours, apart from if it looks like it's mould or fungus, probably isn't the right thing to do. So yeah, but it will bring out all that texture. And the reason I'm doing this now is I think that I might very well put some uh, more to glue the trees in place earlier than it says in the description. Um, which obviously I'm currently ignoring, or I'm just I'm doing the base at the moment, so I'm still kind of on uh, step three, four-ish. But yeah, they say to base, they say to paint the tree before you put it in place. But I'm considering at the moment painting it after I put it in place. The reason I'm considering that is I want to. Um, I want to, t to build, make it so that it looks like it's part of the terrain. So I'll be putting the um, soil that its roots are diving into will be covering over the ends of the of those roots. And yeah, I, might, I mean, I might paint it, actually. I might paint it while it's off, but then I think I'm going to stick it in place, put the trees in place, and then I'm going to do the path. So, um, yeah, I think that's probably the right way to go about it. So I've thought about that while I've just been doing my heavy grey overbrush. It is such an effective technique. There we are, it's looking great. So what I'll do now is take all the dark grey off and come in with the light grey. So. Do a very light, light grey over a dry brush, proper dry brush. There we are. So that's the rocks done, and I'm happy with that. So now what I'll do is I'm going to work out what colours I'm going to paint these. Um, I'm not going to put PVA on because I think that the um, I might just use uh, some PVA, some terrain paint actually as my base colour, uh, which has PVA in it, and that will give it a little bit more flexibility. I'm not a big fan of using um, the uh, filler uh, for texturing of bark, as I've said a few times, and one of the reasons is it just crumbles. It's you, if you try to move where your trees are, it crumbles. So um, so yeah, I could have some problems and need to touch up when I actually put these in place. So I'll get myself ready and I'll bring you back for that next step. So I've decided that I'm gonna go for this reddish brown as my base color. Trees are not dark brown. They just aren't, it's not the color they are. So this is going to give it a really nice, and it'll also be a very nice contrast against the green when I put the leaves on. The masking tape is still moving around. This technique I don't like. It's going to look nice, but it's difficult. Very shortly I'll be starting to texture the trees I've made for the more advanced build. And then you can see a better way of doing it. Make use of bathroom sealant or hot glue. Those are the two techniques I'm going to show you next. To do this without having the pain of crumbling filler and the, the masking tape delaminating and the unsticking. So I'll do the top of this, leave it to dry, and then I'll come back in 20 minutes or so and paint the bits that are underneath because that's just the easiest way to do it. 
and also I'm doing this at the very end of my lunch break so I'm going to need to get back to my desk in a very short while I have calls, I'm enjoying working alright, onwards I will bring you back for the next step when I reach it I'm enjoying this far more than I thought I would enjoy doing the trees I think because I've just embraced it this time rather than fighting it last time I wasn't really in the mood but I'm really enjoying it and I hope that you're enjoying watching I hope that enjoyment is coming across there we are that's enough for that one I'll touch that up properly and do the bits I've missed but most of it's dry and I can handle it a bit easier I'll do the next tree and then I'll get back to work and I'll be back later to show you the next step I've grumbled enough about the alternative method, or the official method, sorry, for doing bark on your trees. So now I'm going to show you my alternative method, which I think is far better. First of all, before I show you that, I'm going to give you an idea. This is a uh, drying, bit of drying kit. Um, you can clip your underwear to this and hang it over a radiator to dry if you haven't got very much space. But I've got a couple of these, and I use these quite a lot, actually. Um, when I'm making trees and other things like that because what I can do is you can hang this up and then you can clip your trees so let me show you you can take the root and you can clip the tree to the bottom of it like that and it will dry out of way without getting damaged without the possibility of being knocked if you put it in the right place um, and then you can clip many 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 more, more onto it and you can have, I mean this holds what, 20, 25? So grab yourself one of these and you can use it to, um, for storing terrain while it's, being, while it's drying. So I actually have a hook, which I'll show you later where I hang it from. But first of all, let's get to the, uh, uh, what, what's at hand. Now what I've got here is some acrylic sealant, okay? And this is what I'm going to use for the base, of, for, for putting down the te texture onto this tree. Now, if you can manage to get this in brown, that's far better. But all my local shop had was white, so I'm going to have to make sure I paint it well. But it's quite a simple technique. What you're doing is you're applying the acrylic gel to the trunk and the branches, which is quite hard when you're filming, so I probably won't do much of this on camera. When you've got enough on there, remember to de activate the gun otherwise you'll keep squir squirting out while the pressure reduces and then using your fingers or another tool you spread it in place now acrylic gel is actually water soluble you can use uh, alcohol if you want but just a dip of a finger in your water as you see and you can really spread it around nicely and the benefit of this, the reason why I like this, is it's actually flexible. So when it's dried, when it's gone off, sorry, it doesn't dry, when it's gone off, you can still move things and it doesn't crack. It's got some movement in it, which I think is really important, particularly when doing these wire trees. Because, for example, as you've seen with the wood filler, when that dries, it can crumble. Now you can add, add something to the wood filler, so you could, I could have mixed PVA in and done something like that, that's an option. But this, is it just that's just how it is out of the box, out, out of the tube. So what you do is you cover the entire item in, the, in this material and then hang it on your hook and let it to go off. Now for my other build, it won't surprise you to hear and I've got lots and lots and lots of these to do. So I foresee a lot of this in my future. And actually, making the trees is a reason why I'm not going to hit my, my target of getting this done before I have to go away on business. And that's why it's going to be a little bit delayed in terms of publishing the video. I'm going to be a week behind with this one. But of course, you'll know that by the time you watch this because it will be a week behind. So like I say, if you can get brown, get brown. If you can't, We'll be painting it anyway, it doesn't really matter. And you could do multiple applications to get the correct texture you want. But it works really well. I've done this a lot. 
So I'm going to go with that, turn the camera off because it's quite fiddly trying to stay in shot and hopefully you will find that useful tip and I will see you on the other side of this long process. We've done the technique with the bathroom sealant. Now the next technique is pretty cool as well but slightly more risky for your hands. So it's possibly a good idea to have um, to, to take quite a lot of care when doing this and I might even need to pause to get a third hand. But anyway, what we're doing here is we're using a hot glue gun. This is a cheap one that I've got. And all you do is you smear the hot glue down the trunk, as you'd guess, basically, to fill in the gaps and give it some texture. Now, because of the nature of hot glue, if you're not happy with what you've done, you can come back in with the nozzle, heat it up, and give it a little bit of a shove around. So don't worry if it's not right the first time, even later tomorrow or whatever after quite a long time you can come back before you've painted it obviously apply heat and move it around again a bit messy you do get some strings you do sometimes need to come in afterwards and tidy it up and certainly for a tree of this size i'm struggling at the moment because i'm trying to get in and the branches are getting in the way so to resolve that let's just move them and get rid of the stringy bits hot glue is awesome but those stringy bits are annoying. There we are. So I'm going to carry on with this. I'll leave the camera running and probably put some music on so that I can blur, uh, avoid any swear words that occur. This isn't my normal habit. I really prefer the silicon sealant, not silicon, the bathroom sealant, the acrylic sealant. But this does work well. And if you're better than it, at it than I, I can certainly see that it's a, it's a good technique. So just there, I had a big lump I wasn't happy with. So I went in and heated it up just with the tip of the hot glue gun. And I was able to readjust how it looked very, very easily, as you can see. So you can use the tip of the hot glue gun almost to paint with the hot glue. But it is a bit fiddly and you do risk burning yourself. Maybe it's a better idea with a bigger tree with slightly further apart branches. There we are. I'll stop talking and get this finished. done whole clip 12 and a half minutes including the chatting time I'm now gonna let that dry a bit and then I'll pull the stringy bits off that was okay it's a bit fluffy it's a bit messy the stringy bits are the biggest issue but it does a really good job of filling in the gaps and giving a really nice texture to the bark and things are basically still movable as you can see so you can still reposition 
the tree, which is really important. That's what I really don't like about the official technique. Right, I'm going to stop fiddling and lay that to dry. And what I might do is another couple with the hot glue gun, and just see if I can get better at it. And if I can, then I'll come back and show you another clip of me doing it better because it's been a while since I've used my hot glue gun. The first the glue in this was very old and yellowed, which is this bit at the bottom, which you can see is quite yellow. But that's going to look quite nice, I think, when it's painted up. I'm actually quite pleased with that. So let's hang that up on its storage thing and pick another tree and carry on. Here you can see the hanging washing line thing, whatever it's called, that I've got. It's actually hanging from a, a chain which is coming from a pipe for, our, for the wood burner in here, funnily enough. And what I'm going to do now, this is the next day, you can see that there's a couple of, uh, of ones that I've done with the hot glue and then at the back you can see that's the one with the um, with, with the silicon or the sealant, uh, not silicon. So what I'm going to do now is take these down and then clean them up. And I thought what I'd do is I'd do that on camera and show you just, it is a bit of a pain. There is a lot of stringy stuff. So I'll get that done. I'll point the camera down now um, and we'll clean up the hot glue trees. However, I'm rather impressed with how well they've come out, but let's move on. Here we are then. Here is a hot glue tree and I'm, as I said just a second ago, I'm actually really impressed with how this has come out and this may actually go to be a better and more preferred technique than the silicon. I think potentially when I tried it before and I didn't like it, I just didn't give it enough time. I didn't, I wasn't patient enough. You almost need to do multiple passes with the hot glue gun. Get the hot glue in place, don't worry about it immediately, move on, apply it somewhere else and then go back and tidy up with the hot nib that can then clear any lumps and bumps that you don't like the look of. I have missed something there, however also trees are not even, even. <clears throat> so I might even be able to paint that um, to look not natural, if not I will be able to use a sharp knife and remove it as well and that's the other thing that you can say. Now finally you can see that these are still bendy and that to me is the biggest benefit of both of these alternative techniques because trees aren't straight and also you don't necessarily when you make your tree or when you're starting to apply the, um, the this kind of layer to give it texture you don't necessarily know exactly how you want it to sit and it may be that when you put it on your terrain piece you want to change it and if you've used the official version on this build which is uh, which is the filler that is rigid and it's not going to bend and it's going to crumble if you handle it too much but this is very very hard wearing to handle and you can change up the angles and the, ha and, and the positioning of all of the branches which is just so much more, more useful so i really would recommend one of these two techniques much more highly than the official one from the magazine it's not often um, that I that I recommend over the top of the magazine because they are pretty they know what they're doing um, and it has come out nicely you'll see um, the other the other trees are looking nice and they will look great on the tabletop they're just slightly less easy to work with um, and you haven't got as much flexibility as you have as you can see with this build there we are so that was how long it took me to clean up I can't see any other stringy bits I don't think um, so yeah I'm going to go on and clean the smaller tree uh, I have others to apply texture to and I think I'm going to do them all now um, with the uh, with the hot glue gun technique um, so yeah and then I will start to paint them uh, priming painting this is going to be a challenge I've, I've struggled sometimes to get paint to adhere to hot glue um, I think I'm going to need to prime it with auto primer um, so spray can uh, grey and then paint up from there but I'll bring you along for that when I get to it. Before I do the next step which is going to be a little bit more Luke's APS modelling compound with some stones on the top where the uh, stream comes up here right at the very top of the picture I've got there and then texturing the actual base of the model I'm going to need to do the stone trough that it describes the stream falling into and I've got this little bit of plastic which I'm going to be using potentially if it works as a uh, little bit of a form um, and I'll use my air drying clay which I've got in this Russian salad box at the moment <laughs> and I'll use the air drying clay to uh, build up and make it look like stone but I'll use this as the form. This has got a quite a nice bowl shape which I think it looks quite good um, and yeah I'm pretty I think that'll be quite nice I can do some kind of slab here so we can sit some pictures of the uh, Ent drink on it. 
So the thing that I need to do, I think it's a little bit high at the moment. It's big enough, but it's a bit high. So I'm going to try, and I don't know if this is going to work or not. I'm going to try and cut the bottom off using my hobby sharp saw. Um, so it can, so it will be, have a flat base, which will then be glued on. And then I'll build the, um, build the air dry clay up around it. So, Let's just see if it cuts. I have no idea if this is going to work. It is cutting. I'm going to turn the camera off and sit more comfortably where I can control it a little bit better and I'll come back when I come to the next step. That cut okay. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim down the edge of this rim. And that then will be where the water will pour out. And then I will be filling in all of this with some air drying clay and lining the insides and the outsides with air drying clay as well. But then the water will fall down into it and then pour over the lip that will be here. So I'm going to use the same technique, going to use the same razor saw to cut out a section here for that. So I'll get that done and I'll be back in a second. So there we are. Hopefully you can see there that little notch that I've carved there. That's a bit easier. So what I'm now going to do is I'm deciding whether I'm going to stick that in place right now or whether I'm going to do some air dry clay and then stick it in place. And I think I'm going to put it in place right now. So I'm going to glue it down with a touch of super glue because it's a plastic onto, onto paper. So that'll be fine. It'll dry very quickly. And then I can start sculpting in the rock type around the outside, which I'll be doing, as I say, with air drying clay. So I will get that glued down and then when it's dry I'll bring you along and we will go through the process of sculpting the actual rock. This is going to be fun because I'm working with a clear plastic form which is very difficult to see on the video so apologies for that but as I put the air dry clay on you'll better see it more. So let's get this out. I've got some stuff which I used for uh, doing different projects and what I actually need to do um, I'm going to need to actually have some PVA spread around the base so that it has something to stick to because yeah I don't want this to uh, to move so what we'll do is we'll just drizzle a little bit of PVA and spread that around with a brush which I'll grab now and then we'll start to push the air dry clay and what I'm going to do is going to start from the outside and going underneath in here as you can see and then I'll build up on top once I've done underneath so I probably will let the underneath dry as well so I'll give it, sorry for that, moving in front of the camera there, that was a bit rubbish. So yeah, so I'll probably give this a couple of hours once I've done this first stage before I move on to the next. And it's going to be quite fun getting in under there. But I'll do it, it'll be fine. Right, so a little bit of PVA, not too much. And what we'll do is we'll just take some air dry clay like this. Tell you what, let's turn out to focus off so that it doesn't search, there we are. And then what we'll do is we'll shove it in under there just to fill in those gaps underneath. Now I know I don't necessarily actually need to fill in underneath, but I want to because that's a little bit, it's, this the stuff is not the, the strongest of materials, this, this styrene that these clear pots come in, come made of, sorry, and so, yeah, that's going to uh, it's going to just give it a little bit more support. So if something gets dropped on it or if I make a mistake, it's just a little bit stronger. So, yeah, I'm just going to start packing this stuff in. So I'll put some music on and you can watch. There we are, so that's the outside done. I've just changed my mind, I'm actually gonna do the inside as well. So I will put the music back on and all I'll be doing is covering over this as flat as I can and then shaping the bowl so that it's got a lip. So let's get that done.
There we are. I think that's okay. I'll leave that to dry, see how it goes. Go off. Dry, actually. is air drying clay. And um, go and wash my hands now. And then I'll be back with the next step, which I don't know what it is, because I'll leave that to dry. And then I'll maybe do some... Uh, to be able to do the next step, which I think will be the uh, terrain on the bottom. Given this a blast of grey primer, and that's proven to be an absolutely brilliant idea, and I'm going to recommend this very highly if you're doing hot glue with, on a twisted wire tree, because what you can see is just how much of it I'd missed. I mean, look along here, there's basically no... You can't actually see because of the angle. There's basically no hot glue on this side at all. And also, there's loads of stringy bits that I'd missed which I thought I'd done because I couldn't see them. So what I'm doing now is heating my hot glue gun up again. That was easy for me to say. Heating my hot glue gun up again. And I'm going to come in and fill in the bits that I've missed. It shouldn't take too long. Hopefully I won't gas myself by uh, the uh, effect of the hot glue gun near this paint. It's a proper pr grey primer, just a, a car primer that I use. Um, so yes, yeah, so I'm going to clean off all the stringy bits that I can see. I'm going to come in and put some more hot glue in places I've missed and then I'll go and primer it again, see if I've missed any more. And I think that's just going to have to be the repetitive process. So there we are. It looks great though. I mean, where it's gone on, uh, the texture on that is brilliant. It's going to paint up so well and look really good like a tree. And I don't even mind some of the stringy bits because I can maybe pick them out, dry brush them. They just look like bits of texture. But these stringy bits are a bit bad, the ones that are at the top there. So yeah, I'm going to get the brush going again, get the, uh, sorry, the um, hot glue gun going again, and I'll bring you back for the next stage. Once I've, I've, I'm happy with this, I'll tell you how many times I go around this process. But yeah, hitting it with a quick blast of primer, it's really highlighted a lot of the mistakes I've made. Fortunately, I should be able to fix them. Let's see, fingers crossed. The trees are now dry, the bark's colour's dry, I'm really pleased with it. I like the way that the little bit of yellow is coming through the brown, it makes it a really interesting colour. Um, and what you can see is that they fit really nicely in the base where I wanted them to go. So let's quickly stick these down and then when they're dry we can start doing the texturing. So I have left the spike on, as you can see, and I've just poured way too much PVA on. I can never get the hang of how watery this PVA is right now. But anyway, that will be fine, it will dry clear. So yeah, so I've left the spike on so that it can be stuck through the, um, into the polystyrene below. Let's do it this way around this time, that'd be better. There we are. Paint some PVA over each of the roots. Find the hole, it's just covered up. That's silly, wasn't it? There it is. Nope, there it is. And then leave that to dry. Good. Really like how this is coming out actually. As I say, I don't really like the technique. I don't really like using the um, masking tape and filler. I just don't think it works very well. And I prefer the other techniques I'm showing you. But for what it's worth, this is, this is really starting to come together quite nicely. Um, I'm going to let that to dry. Uh, I may need to clump that down or bend my roots a bit more because it's not quite sitting in. So let me just do that. Sorry if we're going across in front of the camera. A little root bending needed. There we are. Good. Well, I'll let that to dry now and then we'll come in and we will finish off the texturing through the path. And uh, then do the um, and, and then do the foliage. So, like I say, um, this is nearly done. I might even manage to get this this bit out from time. Uh, I'm currently debating whether I'm going to do this bit and everything I've done on the other build, and then finish other build as a separate video. Again, like the like with the previous video I did, where I ran out of time. That might be what I do, so I can stay on on track because there is a chance I can finish this tomorrow. Tomorrow being the last day I've got. So, uh, fingers crossed. Let's see how far I get. The trees are now dried in nicely, and we're now going to do step seven, which is before step six, if you've been following along with the steps. Step seven is adding extra details. The edge of Fangorn is almost a wall of undergrowth and trees, and therefore your model will benefit from lots of extra details. The techniques required for these details can be found in Pack 9's modeling workshop. So use a pair of scissors to cut out small pieces of green pan scourer. 
Stick them onto small sections of the base with PVA glue. To enhance the impression of thick undergrowth, you could even add some of your foliage material to resemble bushes. Next, use small bits of a twig to represent old fallen trees. One or two will be plenty. Glue them down with PVA. Long grasses made from coarse brush bristles will look very effective when stuck down next to fallen trees. So, that's what it's talking about here. I'm going to do a little bit less of that than it's suggesting because of my rockiness and what have you, but I will be putting some deadfall around here. But first of all, what I'm going to do is finish texturing the base with regards to actually adding the sand texture and also filling in around the rocks. So, when I've got this open, there we are, it's getting quite dirty already this, even though it's a new pot. Need to get in and clean that really. I will now do my usual, which I'll run the camera for for a little bit, which is terrain paint, which you can see a, in, the, in the description below, there's a link to a video of how to make it. And number one, sifted sand. So I will get this done, and then um, you can watch while I put some music on. Yeah, well that's enough for now I think. I'll let that to dry and I'll come back and do the next step shortly. Okay now we have time for foliage which is now step six. I'm doing this a bit backwards as I've said. Step six, as in Pack 8's modelling workshop you can use sisal moss, lichen or sponge to make the foliage. However this time we chose to use purpose-made foliage clusters. It's kind of equivalent to what I've made myself. This is very attractive spongy material, but it is quite hard to find and expensive when compared to lichen, sponge or sisal moss. However, it provides hard wearing and much more dense looking foliage. Working on one branch at a time, use PVA glue to stick a piece of your chosen material to the tree. Don't worry about the glue being messy as it will dry transparent. Spread out the foliage and position your material where you want it before leaving it to dry. You might need to work the clusters a little by pulling the lumps off with your fingers, as this makes them look more irregular and natural. You can add more foliage to your tree if you wish to fill in all the gaps or you can leave it quite sparse to get a spookier bear effect. So there we are. Now, I struggle to get this stuff to stick and I'm going to try a new idea here which is Luke's APSs from Geek Gaming Fast Drying Basing Glue which is not PVA, it is um, actually silicon based I think. So that might hold a bit better. And I've got these lumps, these are made using um, torn up foam and mixed with glue and PVA. So let's start. I'll do a bit of this on camera and then turn the camera off because it's probably going to take me a little while. It'll take me loads and loads of time if I don't open the glue. my fingers but not to the foam. Hmm. Yeah that's not going to work. Right let's try this with traditional PVA. I will be back in a second and I will get my PVA and everything ready and we will try again. Right then let's give this another go. I have PVA, I have a paintbrush and I'm going to do the traditional method. And what I think this is going to do, and I think this is just going to have to take time, and I think that's the function. So it's just going to be a case of doing a little bit, letting it to dry, come back, doing a little bit more, not doing things too close to each other, letting it to dry. It's not a quick process, this.
That'll do for now. I will let that dry and come back and add some more later. Have I mentioned that I hate this part? I mean, it'll look all right, but it won't look good enough for the pain that it causes me. <laughs> yeah, it's really, really difficult getting this to stick on correctly. Maybe I'm doing something wrong, but I don't think I am. If anyone has any suggestions, I'm all ears. Pop them in the comments below. It's got a life of its own, this stuff. Can't blame anyone but myself, because I made these. I made this clump foliage myself. Maybe I did it wrong. Maybe I didn't have enough PVA or something in there, or too much PVA. Not sure. Anyway, leave it like that. Come back to that later. Fortunately, I have just taken delivery of the order from Geek Gaming, which uh, Geek Gaming, uh, uh, Luke's APS, uh, with another batch of the terrain modelling compound, which is really good. So that means I'm no longer worried about running out. So I'll be able to do the sides and finish off everything with the uh, modelling compound before hopefully I go away on business, which is just this coming weekend. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mix them up and I'm going to. Uh, fill in the ground floor here and inside the, the cave um, and then I'm going to also do this bit here. Now this is where the stream comes in along the top and then falls down and then the stream kind of goes away through here. And what I've got is some stones, some small stones which I'm going to put down in the rock, in the stream bed when I, um, I'll actually do the bottling compound and then press the stones into the bottling compound um, and that will then give it that nice rocky look. So I won't run the camera, it's exactly the same thing. I might do what I'm doing the stream, um, but I will um, bring you in if there's anything interesting to show, but otherwise I'm just gonna be applying more modeling compound to the base and the, around this. It's just come up really nicely, the, uh, the rock pool. It's gonna look really good. So yeah, onwards. Now for the river bit, which I said I'd invite you along for, so I'm going to. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to use these small stones, just the small stones you can see in that pot. And I'm gonna press them into the river, mainly around this end so that it will look like it's just rivulets flowing along that will then trickle down into this pool at the bottom. So how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna take the Luke's APS modeling compound and I'm gonna turn off autofocus like I always forget to do, but I've started doing it, it's making a big difference. Um, and the reason I need to uh, actually do the Luke's APS here is because I think on the top I am going to use some resin. I'm not sure whether I'll do resin along the bottom of the river, so where it goes through the, uh, cause it, where it goes through, through the actual main part of the build, because uh, A, I don't, I, don't, I might do, uh, I'm not sure, but I don't need to there but because that's going onto paper and it's not going to go through. However, this, this here is onto the white foam and I don't think, don't know if the, uh, if the resin is actually foam safe. It might be, it is different resin to what I'm used to. But anyway, it's better to be safe than sorry. So we'll just put that in. And interestingly enough as well, well interestingly, it might be, today I received a big delivery from Geek Gaming, Luke's APS, which had a load more um, of the modeling compound in. This you're seeing me apply right now is the last that I had before that delivery came in. So uh, good timing that restock. So we'll build this up a bit so that if I do do the resin pour, as I said, I'm not totally sure if I'm going to do resin at all on this build, I haven't decided. Don't need to decide yet. We'll build this up. I'm going to need to do more along the back anyway. i go through some modelling compound. There we are. That's good. And then what we'll do is we'll take these stones and we'll push them in like that. And these will be probably be uh, painted I think but either way I think they look quite nice with some a little bit of that going on so there we are that's all I'm doing 
that's the final process of the terrain for now on this, for the modelling compound for now. There will be some more to do, like I say, around the edges of the build shortly, but I'm probably not going to do that today or before I get back from my trip. So there we are, we have some nice stones that we'll now set into the modelling compound and will look really nice. So there we are, I will bring you back for the next step when I get to it. I had an idea and I think it is cunning like a fox and I'm absolutely sure that I am not the originator of this idea, however I don't care, I'm claiming it. So hot glue gun, why didn't I think of this before? Bead of hot glue, where I want to put my flock or my foliage and press it in place. And wouldn't you know, it just stays. Oh, that's so much easier. Never mind your PVA for this process. Never mind your PVA for this process. Hot glue gun. It's the future. It's the current and the past. It's everything. Look at that. Little stringy bits so I'll have to clear up later. Absolutely fine. Don't take a second to do that. I can now do this without pain, without swearing, and without taking all my rest of my life. <laughs> because, look, just like that. Bosh, we're dressing it. I'm so pleased I had that idea. Right, I'm gonna crack on with this now and finish this up. Get in. That worked amazingly. I'm very, very pleased I had that idea. And because of that, it's not gonna take me until tomorrow to um, finish doing the, flo the flocking of the trees or the foliage, because it's done. So what I'm about to do now is the last few touches on this and then I'll call it done. I'm just gonna do the dressing of the additional stuff around the base and then we'll say it's done. So I have two pots of homemade flock here and my um, terrain paint. So I will just get that started to be stuck on. So I will put some music on and you can watch. Uh, what I'll be doing is I'm gonna be putting some flock around the base of the trees and I'm gonna be putting some down on the path. And now for my final touches, I'm going to put some creepers. So I'm just going to gather that together. I'll be back in one second. So this is that stuff I bought f um, in massive bulk. I've got this bucket full. I've barely tickled the quantity, but I think I might use quite a bit now. This is, uh, I'm going to use this for, um, for putting some tangled undergrowth as, the, as, it, as it describes it. So. Um, probably not quite that much, but I'm going to basically, and I might end up using hot glue, uh, but I'm going to basically look to glue it in like this so that it looks like um, creepers and undergrowth, which is hanging down into the path from around the trees. And what I'll also be looking at doing is actually having some hanging down from the trees. So um, I'll get that done. I'll pop some music on um, and interject if I have something to add. Um, but for, but for now I'm just going to um, I'm, I'm I'm just going to glue that in place and see how I go. So I might I might uh, interject, but for now I'm just going to do PVA and look to glue this in.
like that. Let me zoom that in a bit. There we are. So I'm gonna leave it like that and uh, I'll come back to that tomorrow when it's dried um, and last a little bit of time before I go away and uh, see whether I want to add anything else but I think I don't want to fiddle anymore. I'm very pleased with how it's looking and I'm very pleased actually to have finished it to this stage which is basically finished before I leave on my business trip. So I might have been able to achieve this target before going away if it wasn't for doing the uh, huge build for Treebeard's house. But anyway, I do like to uh, stretch myself um, and I'm loving that build as well. Onwards. Right, the next thing to do is a bit, a bit I've been struggling a bit to work this out. Um, it's the final day before I go away and so I don't have all that much time left. And I think that the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to paint where I want to be rock um, with black and then do my dry brushing. So that's gonna be the front of the cliff in here, in under here, and the bowl. Now the reason I'm saying that is that one of the things I want to do is I want to put some the resin in to the bowl. So if um, that's kind of what I'm thinking I'm gonna aim at as a target today, is do the resin pour and leave it at that. So I have my black paint and I have a large brush. Excuse me for sniffing, I've just woken up. And I'm gonna come across and I'm just gonna paint the whole of the cliff and underneath the cliff and and on the floor below the cliff, because that's gonna be a rock. So there we are. I will uh, get that done. Turn this on its back so I get a bit of a different angle and a bit of different access. However, they can't get the camera positioned in a useful way so that you can see most of what I'm doing. So I'll stop now, that's pretty much all done. Just got the back of the cliff to do now, which I couldn't access before. So, yep, yeah, I will bring you back in for the next step shortly. I managed to uh, get this all painted black. I did another coat since the first one because there were a few bits missed. And what I'm gonna do now, I have a little bit of time as I'm currently exporting the vlog. Um, I'm gonna do my gray overbrush and then my light gray dry brush. So you can see just how quickly this technique brings out the beautiful texture of this bark rock technique. I absolutely love the effect you get and it is just so easy to do. It takes no time at all apart from the gluing of the rocks on but that's not too bad even really. I don't think it will take that long. Now this is going to be a heavy overbrush. I'm not rubbing very much of my paint off on my white, on my towel just out of shot. I'm rubbing a bit off just so that it's not painting on and filling in too much but I'm leaving most of the paint on because I want again this is the same style of rock as I'd often do where it's quite grey has a quite a deep black in the recesses and then it has 
all sorts of funky colours which you dry brush on after it's all dry. Which may or may not happen tonight, depending on how long my exporting takes. But it is just such a quick and simple technique that I remember the first time I did it with bark and I was like, wow, this is the way to do it. And I've not changed my mind. So while we've been talking, which is less than two minutes, I've nearly finished. So I may as well keep talking and not bother putting on any music. So we will now go inside the cave. I'm going to have to make a table, a stone table. And I might even, I was planning on doing that soon, I might even do that while I'm away. Because that is something that I can potentially do. A little bit too much paint on them, but that's fine, that's just a very grey rock. But yeah, that is something I can potentially do in a hotel room. So yeah. Right, I'll stop the camera now. I'm going to turn this on its front and do the, uh, do the dry brushing on the floor of that because I can't really access it very well. But that is just, I mean, it's just so easy and quick and it comes out with such a great, great result in such a short time. Absolutely love it. Right, onwards. One thing that I did want to do before I go away is to scatter some sand and gravel, some mixed sand and gravel over the riverbed or the stream bed more. So that's up here at the top above where the waterfall is going to go and also where it's going to trickle out of the pool I'm going to do along the base there. So I thought I'd just uh, get that done now. I'm actually currently importing some files um, for another video. So I'm going to put some neat PVA down over here. I have a wet brush, which I will use to spread it out. Okay, and this is something I was going to do yesterday because I was planning on getting this painted and dry brushed before I went away, but that just didn't happen. Been too busy getting ready for trip. So we'll just make sure there's a good amount of PVA there. Just neat PVA. And then I'm gonna get a spoon and I've got a big bucket, so actually I might lift that big bucket up. Whoa, it's hammer, it's not light. Big bucket. And I'm just going to scatter the sand in the middle here. Trying to avoid the big rocks where I can. But I'm not too worried at the moment about having too much because what I'll do is when I come back from my trip now or what I'm having tonight or tomorrow morning because I'm leaving too early in the morning I will get rid of all the excess and then uh, paint that black and then dry brush it. So I'm going to now do the, the rest of this down the, um, down the stream in the middle um, and that then probably is going to be me completely done hobbying and I'll go to bed. I'm back from my business trip and as is traditional, I am now fixing a mistake. So what I really should have done is put the polystyrene um, as close to the edge as I could so I only had to do a very thin skim. Um, as it is, it kind of is con concave as you can see, so I'm going to have to go pretty flat and get quite thick there. Um, and the same here, I've got quite a large divot here which is going to allow me to kind of s smooth that off slightly maybe make it a little bit more interesting but anyway I have some Luke's APS's modeling compound I have three bags left I hope I've got sufficient but either way I'm going to start now just finishing off mainly because then I can actually I have the extent of the edges um, and I can then start to scenic I am working on the trees, um, they have, were um, left drying and I'm playing around with them doing a few tests. I know, shocking, <laughs> I'm, I'm practicing before I film, it's an unusual feeling. Um, but they're coming on nicely, so I'm just going to get stuck into this. I'm not going to film it because you've seen Modeling Compound lots of times on my channel. Um, I make it quite dry compared to the mix, um, so that it dries quite quickly. I just prefer that. Um, but yeah, let's... Uh, I'll, I'll bring you back at the end and I'll tell you how many bags of it I use in this process. Yesterday I did half of the modelling compound and this morning before I started work I managed to get the other half done which is really cool. I used about a bag and a little bit more, so about 1.2 kilograms of modelling compound to do all the outside which is a relief because I only had 3 kilograms in. 
The next thing is to paint on some grout. Now here I've got black grout and I'm going to paint black grout on the outside edges, so along the front, along the top and along the back. So far what I've done is I have put a spoonful of the grout into this bowl and then just broken up the large lumps because I forgot to sieve it. Normally I sieve when I'm doing this. Then I will be adding some PVA and this is not a scientific process but probably a little more than you think you need. And then a dribble of water and in this a little less than you think you need because you can always add more I don't want to make too much and then you have the fun process of mixing now I've said this before on the channel I'm going to say it again and then I'm going to turn the camera off because this is very boring keep mixing don't add more liquid because it's hydrophobic it doesn't like to mix but suddenly it will go as you can see and then you'll find that you actually have plenty of liquid in and it will all combine so I'm going to get that done mixed up and then what I'll do is I'll get an old brush, like this one, and I will paint it on, like I say, on these front edges, and then along the top and the back and what have you. And I'll bring you along to show you what it looks like when it is done. Next up, I'm going to start working on the waterfall. Now I'm gonna do a couple of techniques for this, but the first one needs to be started now so that it can go off. And for this, we're gonna simply be using the transparent bathroom sealant. It says silicon sealant, it's actually not silicon, it's, uh, it's actually water-based I believe. But anyway, so we're going to be using this. Now I've just measured and I need this to be at least five centimeters wide so that it can come over the lip correctly from the stream and it needs to be at least 25 centimeters long, which is or, or deep, which is quite big actually compared to ones I've done previously. So hopefully this is going to work out okay. Uh, I have done this before, I've done this years and years ago. I still have those ones I made years ago but they're too small otherwise I would make use of them. So what we do is we're going to, as I say, start about five centimeters wide at least but I'm probably going to just make it a bit wider because you can always cut it down. So what we do is we get our applicator here and we spread a bead quite a thick bead, as wide as you want it. So that's just over five centimeters. Let's put a little bit more on and then release that. So that's just over five centimeters. There we are. And put your cap back on so it doesn't go off. Next up, we got ourselves a toothpick. Taking our measure so that we know that we're gonna get this long enough. I'm actually going to rotate this slightly because it's going to be slightly easier for me to do. You simply start dragging towards you like so. Now it might be that I might need to put quite a lot more of the um, silicon sealant on for this to work. But basically what you're looking at doing, and I want this to be quite thin, so I might actually draw some more silicon sealant on the top, but you're looking at pulling it down so that you get a curtain type effect, like so. So let's add some more silicon sealant to the top and keep dragging. Going to need quite a lot I think to get it this long. So yeah, a load more there, and then release, cap it off, and get back to dragging. So I'll pop some music on, and you can watch just how long this takes. I need to get down to around here. <laughs> Let's do it.
So there we are. Now I've got two streams which I can then separate out. So I'll let that go off uh, overnight and come back to that tomorrow and that should be enough for the first part of my waterfall idea. It's really simple. What you'll have noticed is, as I'm learning, uh, I have not done one that long. If you want to do a short fall, it's really easy to do just with a bead across the top. But for a long fall, it's probably a good idea to do the bead across the top. And then as I've done here, draw some horizontal, so some vertical lines that are as long as you want near enough and then draw them out because otherwise you're just dragging from the top all the time and it gets very difficult. Um, it's probably not all that easy to see because of the, uh, it's clear on white, but uh, maybe that zoom in, there we are, that shows it a little bit better. It's coming all the way down to here um, from all the way up here. So it's plenty over 25 centimeters. So I let that go off all night um, and uh, we're gonna jump onto the next step. Okay, so now we're going to have a look at these trees, which I've made a start on, as you can see. Uh, this was me just playing around with some different techniques. First of all, here we have a tree which I've done a very light wash. And on this one, I used my raw rumber, which I've got from Windsor & Newton. This one is a much deeper, more solid covering from the Windsor & Newton raw rumber. And this one is this gauche that I have here, which just is brown, uh, that I bought in Belgium years ago and I still still haven't done it. Uh, maroon brown, it says. So yeah, so those are the colours I've got. And I'm quite pleased with the variation. This one obviously very light, maybe more of a silver birchy type thing. This one a lot more darker, what have you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the rest of the trees in the same style. So I'm probably going to mix it up a little bit. I might do a thin wash of this one. The way I did that was literally just get a very wet brush, mix it on my plate and uh, then wash it on. So I will bring you along for that. Uh, I'll get the other trees. I'm pleased with how all of these have come out. This particular one isn't all that great. It's kind of not really worked in terms of the covering, but I've tried to make a benefit of that by doing it in, a, in some way that highlights the mistake rather than tries to hide it. So I'll get myself set up, get my paints ready, and then pop some music on and you can watch as I paint the next few trees. Next up for this is semi-patented, or not, terrain paint, which is just normal house paint mixed with PVA and a little dash of washing up liquid. Um, and I'm gonna paint that all over this and then sprinkle my sifted sand over it. And that will give the texture and a little bit of the color for the area that is not the river. I'm also going to let the brown seep in a little bit inside and onto where the river is because then I can come along and I can do the um, resin pour. So I'm not going to do that on camera really because again it's something that's been done lots of times um, so you can see that on many many of my other videos. Paint the, sand, paint the paint on quite thick and wet, particularly when you're doing it over the modeling compound because it soaks up the paint and it dries very quickly. And then scatter on sand and leave it and move on, move on, move on each section. And then when you're done, I've got a big tray which I'll empty the loose sand into and it will be fine and dry. So I'll get that done. I'm coming to the end of my energy uh, for the night. I've been making trees that you can see 
just on this corner here, there's a tree. So you'll see that, um, that's my practice. I'm just making sure that I've got my technique down. Um, so you'll see that as well very shortly. I managed to get all of the paint and sand on last night. Worked a bit later than I wanted to, but at least it's all done. So now I've got a couple of minutes before a bit of work. So I'm going to take the same brown paint, which I used underneath the sand, which is in my big jar here, and I'm going to paint that over the top of the sand. Now the reason for that is this is supposed to be quite a rich area, um, uh, but I'm not going to paint it all over. I'm going to leave some sandy bits sticking through just to give a bit of variation. This will also act as a sealant. So if you don't want to change the colour of the sand, then you can use just PVA or Mod Podge or whatever it is you have locally. I just use watered down PVA and that will seal it as well. But you do need to do a sealing stage at this, um, the sealing coat at this stage. Otherwise you'll really struggle when you're doing your flocking, which is the stage after. This is suddenly coming together quite quickly. There are definite benefits to living in such a warm country. That has dried and turned done dried very quickly indeed. So the next thing I'm going to do is paint the clear PVA over the whole of this so that I will be sealing in anywhere that didn't get brown paint. Um, and that will also dry hopefully before the end of the day. It's just lunchtime now, so a couple of minutes on this and then I'll be able to go and have some lunch. So, trees. What you can see here is the practice that I've been doing off camera so I can work out exactly how I want to do this um, and I've been playing around with a couple of different techniques so let me talk you through it. First of all this one here has been stuck down using Luke's APS's reach it, fast drying basing glue so I've run that as a bead along the top of the of the branches and then stuck this is actually also from Luke his tree canopy foliage which is sphagnum moss and then I made a little bit of a mistake you can see it's quite white and frosted because what I did was I didn't shake my varnish enough my spray varnish and it's turned it white but it is quite solid so I think if I do a proper spray varnish I think that might not be a bad idea so that's idea one, and it's holding on all right. Bearing in mind this isn't a gaming piece, so it doesn't have to be as solid as possible, but it'd be nice for it to be not fall off. However, it's actually stuck on well. Using the basing glue has been good. Next, we have this one here. This one was stuck on with the same technique, so I used the fast drying basing glue to adhere the uh, foliage to the branches, and then I used my uh, scenic glue, which is watered down PVA, as you can see in this pot here, just that stuff, and soaked it over and over again with that. Now, on this one, I have noticed just now that some of it has fallen off just up here. There's a, there's a spare branch, which doesn't look right. I have deliberately left some bare, but yep, yeah, I'm gonna have to stick something back on there. But again, that's feeling pretty good. It's gonna be tough enough for this, um, but it does look a bit matted. It has matted it down a bit. Whereas if that hadn't frosted, this one hadn't frosted, then it would look much more natural. Finally, we have this tree here. And for this one, what I've done is I used spray adhesive. So the um, permanent spray you get from 3M. Now, again, I think also just the fact of the time of year, it's very hot and it's very um, muggy. And so it has frosted onto the bark a bit. But again, I quite like that effect. It looks a bit different. Trees aren't brown, they're gray. So that looks quite nice. It's stuck on okay. And this needs to be uh, made more solid either with my terrain glue or with a better spray of varnish. So what have I learned? What I'm going to do, and I will bring you along for this for the, for the first one, is I'm going to stick some more of the sphagnum, some more of Luke's APS's tree canopy, tree foliage sheets onto one of my branches using the fast drying basing glue. I think I, think I quite like that idea. It, it works well. Um, and uh, it doesn't frost up the uh, trunk so much. But I am going to do at least one more with the spray adhesive because, as I said, I don't mind the frosting a bit, uh, and I want the variety. So, what have I learned? Well, make sure that you're not spraying in very humid conditions when you're doing spray varnish because you end up with, with white trees. Again, it's okay. I don't mind too much. I can maybe get a little bit of, of, of spray paint on that or, or whatever and, and make it more green, but it, it's fine, there is variety in, in, the, in the real world. 
Uh, and the second thing is, um, you really do need to make this sphagnum moss very, very solid, otherwise it just falls off. So I'll be back in a minute for the next step. With the trees done, now it's time to look at the waterfall. Now this has been left overnight since last night when I did the work. So now it's ready to be peeled off of its back, which I can do very, very carefully. And you'll see what we've got. Hopefully this won't tear. Shouldn't do. Doesn't normally. Hey, hey. So what we have, if I can get that in shot, sorry, that wasn't the very best of shots there what we have is a waterfall type effect as you can see it's maybe a little bit kind of big for what i was looking for a little bit so i might have to cut that down so what we'll do is we'll move over now to the diorama now that's been separated and work out how it's going to drape and then we'll get it stuck in place right then as you can see i've just laid this on um, and it's definitely long enough, it's actually a little bit too long, which is good, rather too long than too short. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to work out roughly how deep I'm going to want the pool to be, and the pool's going to clearly have to be deep enough so that it can then trail over the edge. The other thing to bear in mind is if I trim some of this off, I can then save it and use it as the uh, water which is going to be trailing over the edge here. So I'm not going to be wasting anything if, I, if I'm a little bit kind of like you know, dramatic in my cuts. So what we're going to do, actually, I think, is I'm going to, and it does tear, but I might get a knife to do this, actually. Oh, there we are. I'm going to tear down that line right now. And that can be one stream coming down there. So I'll be able to glue that on here, on the end, and just leave it to drape with maybe a bit of PVA behind just to like get it to adhere to the uh, to the side of the rock, but that will be fine. I might actually do that. There we are. Go from there, like that. So let's get the other side because I would like to have two little trickles. It says it's like curtains coming down. Now I'm not going to be able to achieve that completely because of the limitations of this. However, as I said. This is, this is really good for big, strong waterfalls, this technique. It's not quite so good for these little dri dribbly bits. But as I said before, I have got another trick up my sleeve, which will be coming out as well. So yeah, that will look quite nice. That actually wants to go like that, the other side of that little rock there, making it believable. There we are. So those will be the two main falls. So I'm going to get them glued in place with PVA now. Um, and then when I start to do the um, the resin pour, which will be tomorrow now probably, then I'll show you the next idea because that involves string and resin and it will be how we'll get little drips and little stringy bits coming down in between. And I will save the off cuts, as I've said, so they can go down here at the bottom coming out of the stone basin. So let me get the PVA. I will bring you along for this so you can see. So I'll be back in one second. Okay, so I've got myself some PVA on a plate down here and I've got my paintbrush. So what I'll do is we will put the PVA on down the fall so that it has something to adhere to. And then we'll drape it in and it'll be as simple as that. Bear in mind that when I pour the um, material in there, the resin in there, it will also stick nicely there. So when that's dried, I'll be able to cut that more to size. So now we'll do the other side. There we are. I will now leave that to dry and I'll be back tomorrow now. I think that's me done for tonight. I'll be back tomorrow now with the next steps. Frustratingly, when I came to this this morning, the PVA, while it had dried and it was secure, it wasn't quite secure enough for me, it wasn't quite enough. So what I've done is I pulled it off, peeled it off, and you can see that there's a pin at the top on the right hand side holding that one in place. And I've tried using the um, slightly more um, grippy basing glue from Luke's APS, which may also be not the best idea. Um, and if that doesn't work, then I will probably be trying some of this next, 
which um, probably will work better um, and will also dry totally clear. So we'll find out. I'm going to leave that side to dry for a couple of hours uh, over while I'm working and maybe after lunch I'll or around lunchtime I'll have a look at it and see what has happened and see whether it's dried. So yeah, a little bit of a mistake there, but I'm carrying on. This is dried enough. So what I'm now gonna do is I'm gonna put the water effects that I'm gonna use on the top <clears throat> and along the stream. I'm only gonna do it on the top at this stage just because I want to play around this I haven't really practiced. I am gonna use the same material as I used to make the actual waterfall. I'm uh, not going to do this with any, um, not going to do this with resin because, well, I just don't want to. Uh, resin will come for the pool. So what we're going to do is we're going to drizzle this clear, um, this, this clear material on there where the it's a sanitary silicon where I want the water to be. And then I've got some 99% alcohol. You can wear gloves to do this, but I don't bother. You probably should wear gloves. And what I'll be doing is, I'm gonna spread this and flatten this so that it looks good. Now the problem with doing this over and above using silicon is it doesn't self-level. However, I want this to look a little bit like a rushing stream so I actually don't mind if it's a little bit kind of uneven and rough. And I think it will end up looking really nice. So all you do is you just keep dipping your finger in the alcohol so that you don't get the material actually sticking to your fingers. And it's once you do that, it's very similar to working with modeling compound or anything else of the like. Because all you're doing really is pushing it around carefully, gently, getting it to be in the places that you want it to be. And of course, if you find that you don't have enough, then we can always go and get some more out of the tube. What you can see is that this is actually going to act as an additional glue for the waterfall as well. So I think that's enough for now. I'm going to let that go off, see how I feel about it and come back. Um, and I'll do the base, if that works, I'll do the base, uh, the one along the base on the bottom in exactly the same way. So, quite pleased with that. That was very quick, as you can see, and I think it looks like a rushing stream. Let's start static grassing. So, I'm someone that uses the uh, WWS Fast Tack glue for all of my static grass adhesion, and I also have the Pro Static Grass Applicator, which I believe I have Serial number 13 from batch number one. So I was the 13th person ever to buy one of them. <laughs> However, I am using Luke's two millimeter static grass uh, because it's brilliant and I like it a lot. And I have quite a lot of it, I buy it in bulk. So what I'm gonna do is I will put down a area of this fast tack glue. And I don't put it everywhere, I, as you can see, I spread it around. And there are two different ways that you can apply your static grass two different techniques. One of them is to leave it like that. That will give you some ridges and it's quite nice if you want things to stick out or stand out or be a little bit more kind of bold or proud of the, te of the uh, terrain. But a better way is to come in with a damp brush and just spread it out so that it's a little bit more natural looking and looks good like that. So I'll just do a very, very small area on camera, like I say, so that it's not too samey. We'll then put a bunch, and the first, I'm gonna put the dark down first, and I'm gonna do an, a scattering of a lighter color over the top. This is Summer Static Grass from Luke, two millimeter, as you can see. So we'll dump some of that into the hopper. And now that's all there, I will hold my pin in place and come in and scatter my static grass. And when I've got it all out, then I move it over very slowly and very close and I can actually hear it picking up the static grass. So that 
act as a pre kind of like clean and I'll come along after this with my hoover and hoover again. So there we are, that's some static grass down. I will now do the rest of the board in that way with the darker and then I'll come along when I'm going to do the lighter and I'll invite you along for that as well. It's time for a epoxy, time to do the water pour. So this will go into this little bowl so I need to mix a very small amount so that it just uh, fills up and it doesn't trickle over very much. Don't mind if it trickles over a little bit as it happens because that will then give me my little runnel. If that doesn't work well then I've got these spares here. So I've got the two pots and I've got the third pot for mixing in and I can use these to uh, get my quantities correct but I really really don't want very much so I might do a couple of pours. I might just do a couple of very very small mixes and uh, build it up um, in that way rather than trying to get the quantity right first time. I'm using the CFS water clear epoxy because it doesn't have any smell and it dries quickly and it looks really good. So the way that we do this is I've marked A and B on each of my pots and you can see that this is part A and this is part B, very clearly labelled. So we pull out the nozzle, we get gloves good point. I don't think it's that bad for you, but I always wear gloves. Give me one second. Always rather safe than sorry. I've got my gloves on. So yes, yeah, so we pull the nozzle up and then undo it like that. And then we dribble an amount in. Now because I'm going to be doing this in very small quantities, it's actually not going to be all that easy. Um, but I'll just put a flat covering of about half a centimetre across the bottom of this, like so. And I always put the top back on and screw it in place very securely because the last thing you want is to knock this over and have it go everywhere. That would be a bad day. So the next thing is we put about a centimetre across the bottom, or five mil, half a centimetre across the bottom of this. There we are. And then what we do is we put them into our combining cup and then mix, and it doesn't take too long to mix. There we are. So that's part A and part B all into the central mixing one. And what we'll do now is we will take this and we'll mix it, just like that. Okay, and now we'll move the camera and we'll do the pour. There we are then, so that's where the epoxy is going to be poured into. And my hands will probably get in the way because I'm right-handed, so I'll be pouring my left hand. I will do my best to stay out of shot. But I think I'm going to fail just because of how I have to do this to get the scraper in. But what I'm doing is literally simple as pouring it in, like that. Now, as I say, I reckon I will need to do another mix to get the depth I want but I will let what I put in here go off first and clear it from its bubbles and all that stuff, which has obviously got in quite a lot. Separate these. Now I'm going to need to do a little bit more of a pour. Very small one, which is a bit of a shame really. I've cleared a load of the bubbles, um, but not been able to clear all of them. However, it is a underneath the waterfall, so I'm not too unhappy about that. But what I wanted to show you here is I'm making use of these clamps just to stretch the waterfall very slightly so that it goes down into the, into the uh, um, water that's there now. And then when I do the next pour, which will be very much smaller, as I've said, then I can just do a little dribble um, and that will build up over the top. And then I can do the water effects for the um, ripples from where the water is falling in. And also I will do the other idea I've got for a couple of other drips and draps that are going to come down and fall into the pool. So yeah, so just a, a little bit, very lightweight. They don't weigh very much those clamps, but they're just enough to stretch it that five mil or so, so that they reach where the water level is up to now. And now 
to paraphrase or to quote Jack Rabbit from Jack Rabbit Slims, the moment we've all been waiting for, the trees. So I've made a couple of thoughts about this and gone backwards and forwards a little bit, but I've settled on what I'm doing. So if I've said something different previously in this video, which I might have done, then just realize I've changed my mind, which is something I do quite a lot. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight trees right now. One of which um, is just still gray because it's not been painted or anything yet, but it will be done. The, the equivalent, um, the, the, the partner to this small one, it just got missed out somehow. So yeah, so I've got eight trees of different sizes, which are going to populate this particular board. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow the uh, description, which is that there are small tree, medium tree, large tree, bigger tree. So if we look at this small tree, you can see that, that is going to fit quite nicely here. Okay. And then we can get one of the medium trees. So I have the one that got turned quite silvery, which will be able to fit here. And then I've got a larger tree here, which will be able to fit there. And then I'll be able to put another larger tree on the top. So it'll be eight on a side. And I might end up making some more and changing it around, but I'm not gonna uh, show the entirety of this process because it's gonna be very repetitive. But basically, first of all, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick the trees in place. They all have a little um, sticky out bit at the bottom to make it easier. And I have a bridle here, a round bridle. So what I'll be able to do is find out roughly a location where I want the tree to sit, press down through like so to make a hole. There we are. And then that will fit in there nicely. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go along and do this process for each of these trees now and get them glued in. I'm probably only going to, I'm going to do something simple like PVA uh, to, to hold them in place. And then once I've done that, I'll bring you back because the next step will be filling in around the roots, which is going to be a slightly more involved process than I wanted it to be because um, I've actually flocked and I should probably have fitted. It was tough. I, sh I could have fitted these earlier, but then I wouldn't have been able to flock quite as, as much underneath like I want to. So it's just going to be a remedial step to do the around the roots. So that's fine. So we'll stick this next one in. It's going to go roughly there. Like that. And like I say, I'll come along with PVA and fill that hole and it will hold in place. So that's going to look really nice. So we'll get those done and I'll bring you along for uh, the next step as soon as I'm ready. The trees are now nicely glued in place. They're pretty solidly in place. However, there are still, as you can see, little gaps underneath the, uh, the roots and that's not really what I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of Luke's modeling compound as I put all over the rest of the build, but I'm going to mix brown paint with it so that it's brown, <laughs> so that it's the same color as the soil. Um, and then I'm going to put it in there to fill in the gaps very, very carefully. And then once I've done that, I'll put little scatters of the same terrain, scenic material, the same static grass as I've used so that it'll be masked in. Now you might be wondering why I did it this way around, why I've done uh, the trees after I've finished doing most of the static grassing. And that's because I would have found it very difficult to get in underneath all these branches with the static grass, grass machine and cover the rest of it. So uh, fixing up is an easier task than doing the entirety of it. The other thing I wanted to say is I'm probably going to end up doing a few more trees. There's a gap here and I might put another one or two up on the top as well, which you can't see in that shot at the moment. So um, yeah, there might be some more trees on this, which will be done after this video. But for now, this is, this is all the trees I've got. So this is all the trees it's getting. So I'm going to mix it up and then when I'm ready, I will come back in with the camera um, and I will put some music on and, and show you at least one of the trees, show you how I'm going to pack it in underneath. Uh, so that'll be coming up very shortly. So we've got the camera nicely focused in on this first tree. And that is what the Luke's APS modeling compound looks like 
with a bunch of, of brown paint, which is actually chocolate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flick this over now onto manual focus so that it doesn't hunt. And then we're going to come in and we're going to build up around the base of the tree, as I say, on top of what's there already, very, very carefully. So we'll fill in underneath at the back as well. And if it covers over most of the, or some of the um, root system, it doesn't really matter because more the extensive root system was designed to give it a little bit of support. So this is as hard as it is because I'm trying to get in without knocking foliage off because the foliage is not all that secure. Unfortunately, I'm still going to be learning that technique, I think, of how to make really good secure foliage. But this will dry nicely, hopefully. I'm going to smooth it out nicely and then come in tomorrow with some more scatter and blend it a bit better. So there we are, that's what I'm going to do around all of the trees and hopefully it's going to work. There we are. So that's the first tree done. Doesn't take very long, but you do want to um, be a bit careful and steady when you're doing it. So I'll carry on doing that for all the other trees and I'll bring you along when it's done to show what they all look like as a wide shot and then that'll be me done on this for tonight. There you are. I've put brown patties around the base of each of the trees and it's going to look okay when it's dried I think. As you can see that's, uh, that's looking okay there. Just focus in on that. It's obviously still very wet, it's only just been finished. So I'll leave that to dry overnight and then tomorrow I'll come in and finish the terrain and scenicking and then we'll nearly be done. A little bit more pour of the resin and the stream at the bottom and then that's finished so yeah there may be a few maybe a few flowers scattered here and there as well this is dried really hard and these trees are now totally solidly in place which is perfect so what i'm going to do now as we approach the end of this build is come in with some pva glue some normal pva glue and blend in this additional basing material using flock and static grass now it occurred to me last night bit late because obviously much too late that what I probably should have done and a better way of doing this would have been to have had this um, additional basic material underneath each tree as I put it in place so that it was a little bit less less of it needed and uh, so it didn't look quite so unnatural I'm hoping I can blend it in successfully but we'll see I mean at the end of the day nature isn't neat and there are differences around the base of trees so i'm hoping that i can kind of make this work okay so we're going to put quite a lot of pva around it and also onto the static grass that's there so a good amount of pva and i'll do this for each of the trees but i'll do most of it off camera because it'll be the same technique and then when it's done i'll show you what it looks like and then what I've got is I've got two of these, these are shop bought, so you can't really see, they're shop bought um, flock. And I'm just going to come in and scatter it in, hopefully, to give it a little bit of a base. And once this base is in and dried, later on today I'll come along and also put in a mix of the actual same static grass. This is just to give it a little bit of a base so there we are and i think it will work looking at it what i'm also going to do is excuse me for my arm getting in the way what i'm also going to do is put some leaf fall and other uh, twigs and what have you so it looks like there's a little bit more um, interest around the base of these trees than just grass growing up it is fangorn after all fangorn is a tangled mess but also it's Treebeard's home and I'm sure that he would keep it looking nice so I think there might be some dead fall but not too much so yeah so we're going to put loads of like that press it in 
and that blends it in quite nicely. It might be a little bit obvious when you get close up, but like I said, when I put some twigs and that around, then that will look a lot better. So I'll continue around the rest of these, um, finish this off, and I'll bring you back for the next step, which will be deadfall. I've gone through and I've done the base of all of the trees, and if I zoom in on one of them, I think you'll tell that it looks quite good. You can probably see there. I think that looks okay. It just looks like a uh, like underneath the tree to me. What I'll be doing, as I've said, is letting that dry and then adding some, some uh, brush and fallen twigs. So I'll get to that probably later on today. Um, there'll be another resin pour required over here. That needs to be a bit deeper. And then I need to do the resin that's gonna go in the stream that comes out of that lip. So that's also gonna have to be done today because this is very close to finished. I've also realized and forgotten, realized last night that I need to make a stone table and also put the bed that Mary and Pippin sleep on inside the cave. So I'll be back to do that as well very shortly. So now it's time to dress the banks and underneath the trees. So what I've got here, is I've got some twigs that I picked up. I have some very dry tea leaves and I have some dead static grass, two millimeter long dead static grass from Luke's APS. So what I'm gonna do, um, and I'll invite you along for the start of this and then finish most of it off camera as usual, is I'm gonna make use of the static grass layering spray, which is basically just very watered down adhesive and I'm going to spray that all over the bank. So let's get that done first. Okay, with that in there now, I'm going to start off with, um, make, with throwing just random bits and pieces on just to mix it up a little bit. Because under trees um, and uh, on banks, you find deadfall and you don't find very much uniformity. So, First of all, using some of the tea leaves, just scattering it on, making it look a little bit more natural. Dead leaves, what have you. That's what that's symbolizing or representing. Just like that. We'll then get, and this will probably require another coat of adhesive, I think, but we'll then get some of these bits of twig and just kind of lay them in like that. And I'll put some more adhesive on to make sure they stick a bit later on when I've finished doing this layering. Maybe even some blobs of PVA over the top of them just to make absolutely sure that they stick. But there we are, you can see just little bits of this and that and it makes it look a little bit more natural already. Because no matter how much tree beard looks after this place, it does travel and potentially he has only just got back so there could be a little bit of deadfall there. So let's get a little bit more adhesive in. And now let's put some static grass over the top. Again, I'm not using this with the static grass applicator. I'm just gonna actually just sprinkle it in in places like that. And throw it on then to give a little bit more variety to the banks of this weather, weather hall. And that looks a lot better. So that'll dry soon and that stuff dries clear. Um, and then I'll come through and make sure that there's nothing I need to actually just fix in place with tiny little blobs of, sort of a PVA. Um, I think probably the deadfall I will need to, but I'm very, very pleased with how that looks. Very pleased indeed. So I'm gonna carry on with the rest of that um, and I'll bring you back for the next stage of the dressing very shortly. Next for this stage, I have some tufts that I got sent to me by Geek Gaming. Thank you very much, Luke. Uh, dead and autumn, which is gonna be fine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make use of these on this diorama. So just out of shot, I have, oh, it's double-sided, awesome, didn't know that. Just out of shot, I have a plate with some PVA on it because I always like to um, double stick my tufts. I don't like to rely just on the sticky stuff that it comes with. And I also have tweezers because you want to hold them in tweezers when you're placing them because otherwise they'll stick to you and it'll be a pain in the hole. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna place those in 
places like that, around the base of the trees, and on this little moor area here, just to give that a little bit more variety and the contrast between that and the lovely green sward of the floor of the valley, which is what I'm attempting to achieve. So let's place those in, like so. And we're nearly done with the dressing. Okay, so I'll carry on with that because I'm going to go out a shot now and I'll do the rest of this and I will um, bring you back in for the next stage shortly. One thing that is very specifically described is the stone table. And I've been thinking about how to do this. Um, I can obviously make it with foam and texture it or do it with bark over foam and texture it. But I think I like the idea of actually using some stones from our own land. And so that's what I've done. I've gone out and I've found a couple of nice stones that you can see, a smaller one and a large one, and they fit really nicely together to make a flat surface. So what I'm gonna do is use PVA to stick those in place, uh, which I'll do now off camera, but that's what they'll look like. Uh, so that's the next step done. Um, showing around the uh, outside, you can see this is now dry and the deadfall and everything is looking really lovely. I scattered a little bit of kind of purple flock on as well just for flowers um, and that's looking great. So uh, we'll get that stone uh, glued down now um, and then uh, I will start probably start to think about the actual pour of the, the next pour of the water effects and also doing the bed. So yeah. Get in there, nearly done, yes. One of the last things to do prior to the final resin pour is to put in the bed, um, as I said just now. So I'm gonna be using this green stuff I bought, which was around Easter time, I think. And I'm gonna be doing this in a very simple way. So first of all, I'm gonna glue it down on the base, just with PVA, so just with a dollop of PVA like that. And then I'm gonna leave that to go off. And then later on, probably tomorrow, I'm gonna to come along and I'm going to put some water down PVA over the top to make sure that it doesn't get damaged. But that there is exactly the effect I was looking for. So there we are, the bed and the table is in place. So that now means that all we have to do is finish off filling this resin, which has now gone off, which is good, um, and fill in this bit, whether with resin or, or not, but fill in the, river, the stream that comes around down the front. And then, and then the build is complete. We're ready for the resin pour. So well, you can see at the front here, I have put a dam across of masking tape, which will be enough to stop the resin from coming out the front. I have decided what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour resin in here and let it trickle over and then dribble some just down here, very, very small amount. Rather than using the same material as I put up here, which has worked well, I just like the idea of using resin. I'm not gonna do this on camera. It's exactly the same process as you saw just a few minutes ago for you, but the other day for me. Mix it together very carefully, pour it in very carefully, leave it to go off. So I will be back to wrap this up because this is the final process and uh, show you what it looks like. I will dress the, um, the diorama as well as this is gonna be a display piece for my Ents. I have a fair few. So yes, I'll be back very shortly in your time to show you how it looks like completely finished uh, and I've done it. It's now Saturday night, so I can start properly editing and get ready to publish this on Tuesday. The idea that I had to do different ways of having water sprinkling down didn't work, so I'll be doing that another time. Uh, basically, I did practice and yeah, it didn't work out how I wanted it to, so that's how, that's life sometimes. Um, I often don't practice, but this time I did and I'm glad I did because it would have been a bit rubbish and you wouldn't have enjoyed the technique anyway. So what I'm about to do now is something which Angela has suggested as a absolute final touch on this build, which I think is a really good idea. So I've just got some white paint and I'm gonna dry brush it over, a little bit more than that. Gonna dry brush it down this um, falls just to give a little bit more definition to where the ripples are. Also, this will help clear off where some of the static grass has got stuck. So what I'll do, I'll get that done. And honestly, I know I've said this a hundred times now, but honestly, that is going to be the last thing that I do. Um, I'll go there now and do my nice photographs. I've got my Ents out, Treebeard and Co. to uh, um, 
to, to, to dress up the, there we are, better, to dress up the build and make it look nice. So yeah, just a little bit of a, of the white. Needed a bit more paint than I was getting out of my paintbrush there. Yeah, and that will now just bring that to life a little bit more and makes all the difference. Lesson here is always listen to your missus. She knows what she's talking about quite a lot of the time. So there we are, final touch, everything is done. Well, two and a half hours later and we made it. We made it to the end of this build and what an epic build it was. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you learned a lot. I know I certainly did. I'm gonna continue practicing and getting better at making trees, that's my aim. So yeah, hopefully as this goes forwards, you'll see my trees start to improve and hopefully you'll be able to improve with me. What I do want to say is congratulations to the Instagrammer who follows me, Welsh Miniac. I was posting teaser pictures throughout this build onto Instagram of the Welling Hall build and asking people to guess, can you tell what it is yet? And right at the very end, just before the reveal, he guessed it and he guessed it because of the stone table. So well done there. Really, really pleased that someone managed to guess it and I'll be doing the same thing for the next video. Talking about the next video, I am going to be reducing the regularity with which I uh, publish my Battle Games Middle Earth builds. They're just starting to take over a little bit and I want to do more variety. I haven't had the time to hobby as much now that I'm working and so I need to spread things out a little bit more so I can introduce some different builds and some different projects to keep variety because that's what I like. So I'm going to be not publishing the next one of these for a month. It's going to be once a month rather than once a fortnight. I don't know how long that's going to last for. It will last as long as it needs to but certainly don't look for the next one for a month. It's going to be four weeks at least until I publish it. So there we are. I will now leave you with pictures and close-ups of both of the builds, both the standard one that I can barely remember now, and Welling Hall, which has turned out beautifully. And I hope that you like them and enjoy them. And thank you so much for watching. Do consider uh, giving me a subscribe if you've enjoyed this content. And uh, also don't forget to click the bell and select all, so that whenever a video goes live, that's how YouTube knows you are actually interested in hearing that it's gone live. Subscribing is not enough to get those notifications. And yeah, thank you so much for watching this big clipper video and please stay safe, stay healthy and stay well.